The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it's the Monday after the silly season, Christmas. It, and it's just when we thought it couldn't get any sillier, it did. Yes, it did. Happy Good Riddance Day. <laughs> good, good, good Riddance Day. CJ has just informed me that our, our, the state has has. Well, actually, it was. It, the, I'm saying that the state delegation probably propagated this. Um, good Riddance Day was... Uh, I guess part of a national uh, endeavor to uh, get rid of negativity. All I could picture was Carol Fiola leading the charge. <laughs> yeah. uh, it made the national news, and I thought that was funny. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's amazing some of the stuff people are looking at. And uh, if you want to send good wishes for 2016, you can go to Tom's, timesquarenyc.com and you can post them, and they'll print them out and put them up at Times Square when the ball drops. <laughs> I don't know whose head they're going to drop it on, but... <laughs> well, just when you thought that politicians couldn't get any more inane, which means totally you know, <laughs> useless, they be doing absolutely nothing, uh, you know, they come up with something like this because that's what they're really great at. They're great at creating labels to, to get the public to not look at reality. You know, the, the, you know uh, negativity day. Anytime you say what they're doing is wrong, you're being negative. So let's everybody be positive. And we want everybody to agree with everything they do. Like, let's, let's all rejoice and not be negative that we have the highest drug costs in the world, even though we produce all the drugs, basically. And yet we pay, you know, sometimes as much as four times more. You know, you can go to Cuba and buy a drug for about one-tenth of what you can buy in the United States. And, oh, I know. And, you know, so, that, but that's, you know, let's, let's be positive about that. Yay, drug companies. <laughs> yay, that, right, yay, the drug thug. Everybody should be able to get a drug that used to cost $13 and, and jack the price up, uh, you know, 900,000% and, and, and just let people die. It, it's, it's a wonderful thing. This is what they do. You know, and, and, and then they come up with other statements. It's like negativity. No, it's not negativity. You know, you, you talk about, oh, you know, the optimist sees the glass half full, the pessimist sees the glass half empty. How about being a pragmatist and say there's a glass of water and there's water in it? There you go. <laughs> you know, let's just look at reality. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's half full or half empty. You know, these are all... These are all you know, diversions to make you think about the, the fact that you didn't get a full glass of water. <laughs> you know, whether you look at it as half full or half empty is irrelevant. What's relevant is there's only a half a glass of water. So let's just look at it. And when you do business, and let's face it, the government is a business. It's a nonprofit business. At least it's supposed to be nonprofit. Businessmen don't, businessmen aren't optimists and negative. When somebody that's running a company finds that his company is losing money and he has to go in and take a hard look at cutting costs, do you think his stockholders say, oh, you're being negative? No, you're being a, you're being a leader. You have to look at the company and say, what fat can we cut? What can we do to consolidate? What can we do to lower costs and increase profits? That's what people who run real businesses do. And the government is a self-perpetuating, you know, money-eating machine, and it's our money they're eating. And they, and they perpetuate that in their own empire, which it is an empire when you think about it. Uh, you know, our state reps are the, are the princes and princesses, and, you know, the governor is, is, is the king. And on, on the federal level, you know, our Congress are, are, the, are the nobility class, and don't ever think they're not. They have their own rules that they live by. You know that a, you know that a state rep can drive in the high occupancy vehicle lane by himself because he's got state plates. 
you know, they don't have to deal with speed limits and nobody gets a ticket if you're, if you're a state official. So, yeah, you know, they're, they're just like us. Sure they are. But they come up with stuff like this. And then to add insult to injury, to throw salt into the wound, Kenny Fiola, I've been told, made a statement. CJ, what was that statement? Unemployment is irrelevant. Ah, unemployment is, ir is irrelevant. Now, there's a real positive statement. Because if you make unemployment not a factor, how positive is that? Who gives a damn how many people have got tin cups and they're standing out on a street corner? What, you know, what, what a property owner doesn't care that his, the people living in his house don't have a job and they're not paying their rent? What business owner doesn't care that the people who live in the city where his business is are unemployed and can't buy anything? And, he, and he's going to go out of business. Unemployment is irrelevant. No, of course it's irrelevant, because I was told that business is booming up in the industrial park. Yeah, it's booming for Matuk. He's selling his $500 towels to the yuppies in New York up on Long Island, and he's paying crap wages in Fall River and getting every kind of break he can he doesn't pay taxes. Doesn't pay, well, yeah, doesn't pay taxes, plus he gets anything he wants. I mean, you know, they'd move the water towel for him. Well, I think they might have done that. Yes, when, they did. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's probably why I remembered it. But <laughs> the fact is that, you know, this is what we've got. And, you know, let's start out the new year by stop, by everyone saying, listen, when you run into a state rep or a politician, tell them, listen, Stop with the BS. The reason that Donald Trump is so popular right now is people in, are sick and tired of your BS. We're not believing it anymore, and we're going to pay attention to what you do. And hopefully at some point in time, what we did with the mayor will trickle down to the city council and the school committee, and we'll start watching what they do. Well, you know, Chip, I... It, you're on something here that's very, you know, very important. I don't know how many of our viewers actually watched the 10 news conference um, this week. And I had to watch it and rewatch it because our new mayor elect is mayor, same old, same old, in my opinion. Well, the reason why I reappointed or kept Joe Macy. Oh, well, you'll have to wait and see. Give me two years. And we can look back and we can say what we did right and what we did wrong. You know, this is all the same bull that we've heard for how many decades? Not, not years, decades, okay? And the people are tired of it. So if this is what we're going to enter into 2016 with, next Monday, a week today, we're going to enter into this type of wait-and-see attitude we don't have two years. We don't have two hours to wait and see. You know, Mayor-elect Correa, if you want to make a clear statement to the voters and to the people of Fall River that you truly do care about Fall River and its people, immediately cut the fat. And, Mr. Mayor-elect, start in your own office. Okay? You were totally against the special assistant to the mayor, but you were the first one to appoint one after Sam Sutter. So what is the nature of this job? Why do you need it? That's fat. That's fat. Okay? And the people don't want the fat. All right? Fall River can't afford it. And I said it in my column this weekend. Mr. Mayor, Sam Sutter, if you've got a set on you and you got the backbone, Maybe the final gift you should give Fall River is the relief it needs. Maybe you should declare receivership and put that in the governor's pocket. Because you know what? That's what Fall River truly needs. Because this new incoming mayor isn't going to do what you didn't do, Mr. Mayor. He's not going to order a forensic audit on every department, every book, every account in this city, which is what we truly need. But it's not going to happen. Because no politician wants to see what they've done 
looked at and looked at closely. Alan Silva said it very clearly. The only out for Fall River is receivership. Sam Sutter, you turned around and sent them back to Florida. That was sound financial advice from a man who knows numbers. Okay? And maybe people are saying, oh, we can't do that. Receivership is the great reset button. Maybe it's time somebody take the bull by the horns and do this. Well, we've got, we've got a new year coming. Next, next, uh, next week we'll be, we'll be having our first show of the new year, uh, a week today. And we'll be immediately following the inauguration. And we'll be following the inauguration, and already we, we've got you know, issues. And as I said, I'm going to give the mayor-elect every opportunity to, to do the right thing. Um, but, you know, the indicators are not good. Um, talked about the lack of transparency in the, in the Sutter administration, the lack of transparency in the Flanagan administration. We all know that. But yet we get it during his press conference or interview or whatever you want to uh, term it, he talks about, you know, what is this, the secret Santa? Wait and see why I kept Macy. Well, I'm going to wait and I'm going to see. But I don't know what reason, and I may be surprised. And if I'm surprised and I think it's a valid reason, I will say, okay, he, you got me. It, you know, that was a great idea. But I don't really believe there's any justification to hire a man that can only work 960 hours a year and pay him $92,000. We have a lot of people who live in this city who are attorneys who could, you know, who could use a job and work full time for that money. And I don't want to hear the stuff about, well, he can volunteer the rest of his time and he can do it. He can't. Nobody will push the issue probably because he is a judge and, he's, and these people are politically connected. But the reality is the retirement boards will, will you know, they may... They may do an investigation, but they're not going to kick it up to Perak because I saw the Perak opinion that said these people cannot work and, and say they're volunteering their time. After they work 960 hours, their job is over. They can no longer be employed, and they can't go back as a volunteer and pretend. That's the Perak interpretation, and they're willing to fight that in court if it gets to them. The problem is, again, the politicians will then tilt the playing field in favor of themselves. But I don't know what, I don't know what reason you could have in keeping the city administrator that was under tremendous fire, and I forgot the quote in the Dion article. It's got more baggage than, I don't know, but whatever. But the fact is, and, and Joe Macy, which was another major campaign issue, and the first thing you do is keep these two positions, and we're going to find out about it later. Well, you know what I want to find out about? I want to find out about when, it, when there's reductions in administrative and management personnel throughout all city departments. I want to know when. Because somewhere over the last decade or so, the, the mantra of cut the fat in government, the, the politicians that have succeeded in eliminating that from, from the public's vocabulary. Years ago, it was, it was political suicide to raise taxes two years in a row. It was political suicide to, to hire all these people and give them these types of jobs. And what do they do today? They march into the city council. And I still remember Lou Pacheco saying how our financial team deserved more money. Well, how about this one, Chip? Just got a message from people at City Hall. They don't watch us, though. Remember this, okay? Who's paying for the interior decorator hired to spruce up the mayor's office? Spruce it up, and they just spend like 
a, <laughs> like a half a million dollars. On well, you know, order. hey, you know, we, we've gone through this Taj Mahal thing before. And remember, it, it's from the boy emperor now. Okay, the boy emperor who worked in and spoke the retire, you know, the acceptance speech just about for the previous mayor who got kicked out. So now we have an interior decorator sprucing up the sixth floor. Thanks for the tips, anonymous. But you know, but this is the problem. We we have we see. But where's you, the money? Well, the money goes to the administrators. I mean, it, uh, like, as I said, DPW has less men than it's ever had. I think. Yet they, they created two supervisory positions in DPW over the last three years. You look at the city hall, we have fewer and fewer people doing the work, servicing the people. But the more people, managers. The people, the people who pay the taxes. We have fewer and fewer people. They've, they've given them more and more work, not a lot of money, because they have a hell of a time getting a, getting a little pay raise. But now they give their administrators and supervisors, and we have new position upon new position. Every administration that comes in comes up with a new euphemistic title for a political bullshit job. And that's the reality of, of what we've got. And like I said, somewhere over the line, in the last, few, in the last decade or two, we've completely eliminated that from our vocabulary. We have to put it back in. I remember when Carlton Viveros was the mayor and he reorganized the entire city. He hired the Coopers and Wyburn study to study every single department and recommend consolidations and cuts in every department. And he implemented many of those. Why? Because in those days, most of the people who have left the city now because of what's go going on would never vote these people back into office if they did stuff like this. And we have to do this again, people. Uh, we're, we're giving, obviously we're gonna give the mayor a tremendous uh, uh, amount of scrutiny. He made a lot of promises and hopefully we're gonna hold them to him. But you know, we're, we're, we're getting pretty good at dumping mayors. <laughs> I mean, hey look, look, I think we lead the country. And you know, people talk about Fall River, but Fall River's a leader in political, in, in political change when it comes to the mayoral level. I mean, let's look at how many mayors we've had in the past three years. And we could conceivably have a new mayor in two years. Who knows? But we ha what we have to realize is, you know, we can't, you know, they con us all the time. So it, don't be negative. But look, like I said, be a realist. It is what it is. But what we have to do is carry that same standard down to the city council and to the school committee. When we created the recall and we pushed the recall, the biggest part of the recall was the information that was provided to the public about the performance of Will Flanagan. And it got people who were not part of the recall, who didn't sign a petition, who were afraid to sign a petition, or just didn't, didn't get, get out where there was a petition, and they went out to vote, and they got rid of the mayor. And we had one of the people in, in, in the uh, organization put together a really great document called Flanagan Shenanigans. And it listed all the follies of Flanagan. But what we have to do is, and that got people thinking, hey, yeah, you're right, this guy did, in, in, you know, said the stormwater was illegal, but he kept it. This guy did do this. And then the purple bags of the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, we have to do the same thing with the city council. We have to begin to look at each counselor in their performance throughout their term, every vote that they do, because we have to realize we cannot continue to allow people to represent us on any level, not only the mayor, because they say the mayor is the most powerful, but the bottom line is, look, the city council is the one that, that, that approves the, these budgets with all these jobs in them, and we've, CJ and I and a whole bunch of people have gone before the city council during budget times and said, this budget is full of fat. There's no positions that are basically eliminated. And what did they eliminate a few years ago, two or three fiscal years ago? Four city funded firefighters. And then they complained about having no firefighters. Well, they eliminated them, but they didn't eliminate one fire officer. They didn't eliminate any supervisors from any department yet we lose people who provide service. 
and this is the con that they run on us. And the city council then says, oh, there's nothing we can do. Well, you don't have to vote for the budget. Uh, and we have to look at everybody's record. I mean, Linda Pereira has been in there forever. And if you look at their, her record, it's not much better than some of the councilors that were thrown out. But she's got a personality, people like her, and fine. I like Linda. I think she's, you know, I think she, she's personable. I don't have anything personally against her. However, like the mayor and like everybody and like you are out there when you're at your job, if you make widgets and you're supposed to make 60 widgets an hour and you're only putting out four widgets an hour because you're, you're not doing your job, you know, your boss isn't going to keep you for a while. You know, the fact is, the pol you know, th these are jobs. And they take them voluntarily to be our representatives and to run this city in the best interest of the people. Not in their best interests, but in our best interests. And we've got to go from top to bottom, not just the mayor. Yeah, okay, look, we're great. I think we're the best in the world. We finally made number one in a good category, kicking out politicians when it comes to mayor. You know? You know, and, and then to say that we're not going to look at the council. This is what we have to do, and we're going to be keeping an eye on them. The, the uh, you know, we are, CAG is going to be looking at these people and, 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 and talking a lot about their performance because we can't allow this BS to continue. We can't allow the state to release the fact that Fall River has the lowest income, household income level in the state of Massachusetts. We're 351st out of 351 cities and towns. And then right after that's released, we've got Rob Mellion coming in and saying, oh, you gotta reduce the taxes on business and, in and increase the taxes on the poorest city in the world, on the residents, to keep businesses in business. Bullshit. You gotta give those people money in order to keep it. Like Milton Friedman said, all taxes are regressive. You got, you got million traipsing up there like the Messiah and, and preaching absolute crap. And then we got Ken Fiola from the Office of Economic Destruction saying that employment is irrelevant. Really? Really? It's irrelevant that the people don't have any money? They don't have jobs? that live in this city, and you're the first guy to go, we gotta pay more taxes. With what? This is the problem, people. They're full of crap. They are full of crap, and I didn't know he stacked it that high. And as I always said, if BS was bricks, our politicians could build a chimney to the moon and have bricks left over. Well, amazing that we talk about bricks. Oh, bricks. Yeah, because, uh they decided that the chimney at the King Philip Mill can stand up. And they're going to use $70,000 of CPA money. Hey, where does that money come from? You, the taxpayer, to decide whether or not the building can stay up. Nobody wants the building up. How come when the people say we don't want it, we're going to get it anyways? Seems like they just keep shoving it right up there. You know, they don't care. Yeah, you know? they don't. And, and they don't even kiss you before they, they do it. Yeah. So I guess, I guess after the first of the year, after the first of the year, our newest award, the Spindle City Iconoclast Trophies, will be awarded. Honorary. Spindle uh, City Honorary. Honorary Iconoclast, Iconoclast trophies. trophies. That's right. Excuse me. I forgot that. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see Who's going to qualify for that award? And how many people are going to know what the Spindle City Icono Honorary Iconoclast Trophy means? And we're going to have, we're working on the categories. We're going to have multiple categories. So we are going to work on it. There will be more, there, there will be more than one, and you can all, you know, check the acronym. And we're going to have a nickname for it when we present it. But the fact is that, listen, <laughs> here's another case. People in the South End, send out the call. I don't live in the South End, but I'll go down there and, and, I'll go down there and walk around 
and pick it because you know something as you said this is this is disgraceful the people in the south end do not want that building up and yet the politicians are going to spend 70,000 they won't put it into a building that's that's helping the community and the CPA goes to the people where that they want you know the you know the 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 money for the air conditioner that, that who that in a building that we don't even know, that they don't even own that they don't own but the person who runs that program is also the spouse of a politically connected person and most of that money goes to the north end which is the most affluent end of the city this is why i will do everything i can to, to get the cpa removed because you know something i'm i don't want to pay taxes for them to build chimneys or, or, or do a seventy thousand dollar study i want my tax money to go to provide me with police fire education and people to service me when i walk into city hall i want the working people instead of having this inverted pyramid that we have with with a million chiefs and no indians left let's flip it around and have a couple you know when carlton viveris was the mayor we had a 300 man fire department and nearly 300 man police department every department was much larger and all he had was a secretary how did he do it we had more people to more people you know to to deal with in every department yet every department had now has more supervisory help bigger salaries and we have more problems you know why they're not doing a job exactly it's time to hold them accountable exactly and you know speaking of uh mayor viveris um my condolences uh and i'm i'm sure yours as well go out to uh, mayor viveris at the loss of his wife um uh, we uh we broke that alert yesterday um prior to getting confirmations and i received two confirmations last night um i am awaiting the arrangements uh for his wife and um you know, again, you know, this time of year to have a loss is is tough. Yeah, uh, my sincere condolences. Also, yeah, he, yeah. my my father passed away right after New Year's, and and he, he was the mayor at the time, and uh, he actually he came to the wake, and and I I really appreciated that that uh, even though we had had some some battles over contracts and stuff like that, but we always managed to get along, to, to disagree without being disagreeable for the most part. And uh, you know, I, it is, you know, it's a terrible loss. And at this time of the year, uh, it, it exacerbates that issue. And, and uh, you know, my my sincere condolences go out to, to him and his family. Yeah, it's 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 tough this time of year. Um, but real quickly, but you know, we're coming down to the last couple of minutes of the show. Um, Christmas. Everyone complained about a Dunkin' Donuts not being open, a Dunkin' Donuts being open. Hey, I want you to remember something. Okay, those people had families too. So if the Dunkin' Donuts was closed, kudos to that franchise holder. To the franchise holders who opened, shame on you. Okay, I don't care if you're Christian or not. I don't care if you're Jewish, Buddhist, you know, Lutheran. The bottom line is, you remember that cup of coffee that you so desperately had to have that you couldn't make one. Because when your employer turns around and says, you need to go to work on Christmas, and you can't be there for your children when they open their gifts or for your grandchildren when they open their gifts because you have to work tough luck your coffee was that important and that's the way i look at it because you know chip you and i have both had to work holidays we've worked thanksgiving christmas and new year so we know what it's like get angry for the right reasons remember that definitely will and remember we're going to be there on inaugural day so that you know what's going on here in fall river and we'll see where we're going to go after that thanks for watching have a great day